Hi, everyone. We are live just in time for Jeffrey to start playing on the piano there. Um, no, it is not a musical performance today, although you never know with these two what is it's going to be. It's going to be the curmudgeon and Liberace, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. Jeffrey, I have to say that many people are disappointed that you didn't send us photos of your bow ties in advance so that we could choose which one we wanted to see this week. So maybe next week we could get on the ball with that do one. I, you have do, I believe, do I believe in democracy? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't. It's uh, 51, the right of 51% of the people to piss in the soup of the other 49%. <laughs> Absolutely. I, we get to choose whichever boat time we want. That's how um, this, uh, yeah. <laughs> my stream is not a democracy. Um, well, welcome everyone. This is the Utopian and the Curmudgeon, which I, uh, the name I affectionately give to this wonderful live stream that I have with Jeffrey Tucker and Gene Epstein, two of my favorite people, both experts in Austrian economics and have absolutely wonderful uh, in-depth knowledge about economic subjects. So it's always Always wonderful to have them on the show chatting about a bunch of different things related to the sec tech sector but also uh, to do with blockchain so you're all here because you want to hear a continuation of their debate about Bitcoin's value where from where is it derived why does it have value I'm also interested in the question I, I hear a lot of people saying you know is, is Bitcoin when you have competing currencies it sort of gravitates to one winning out do you think that's gonna happen with Bitcoin do you think we're gonna end up with a, an ecosystem of hundreds of thousands of different coins so these are all questions that I know people have. Um, welcome to the live chat. So if you are in the live chat, feel free. I'm gonna be there the whole time. I'm gonna hop off the camera and mic in a second. Uh, so I will be there moderating that. So if you have questions for Jeffrey and Jean, I'll hop back on afterwards uh, in their, their little chat section. I'll feed those to them. So make sure you send their, your questions to them. And uh, let's go ahead, Jeffrey, Jean, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. Uh, uh, Jeff, I wanna jump in and I, I noticed, by the way, I just a little promo for you. Uh, September 14th, uh, you're going to be uh, out in uh, San Diego uh, talking about Ludwig von Mises. I, oh, not me. I'd say, no, it's in Silicon, oh. Val in Silicon Valley. I know that it's the age thing. but um, Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, you're going to yeah. be in Silicon Valley. Well, you're going to be talking about Mises anyway. So I will be. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited about that. Because yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you are, Jeff, and, and, uh, and I'm going to help prep you uh, uh, imminently uh, to talk and tell you about Mises. But I'm, I'm going to start by parodying, uh, as Mises would have, uh, this, uh, this dogmatic sort of uh, faux intellectual discussion of the many purposes of money, or the one or two, or the five purposes of money. I'm going to ask by uh, talking about the instrument that's right behind you, the four purposes of a piano. Now, the first, of course, is that it's a decorative piece of furniture. The second is that it's a status symbol. The third is that it's a, a store of value, at least, of course, when it's a uh, it's a great brand. And then uh, finally, oh, I just forgot, it's the fourth, is it's an instrument for making music. Uh, let me try another parody. Uh, the five purposes of a car, it's a decorative piece of furniture on wheels, it's a status symbol, it's a place for having sex, uh, usually in the back seat, sometimes in the front. It's a store of value if it's a vintage car. Oh, it's a vehicle for traveling somewhere. Now, uh, I think you know where I'm going, but I want to read to you um, from uh, from Mises, um, who, uh, do I have it here? Uh, maybe I don't. But in any case, Mises basically said that uh, people like to talk about the various purposes of money, but as he pointed out, money is a fundamentally a medium of exchange. And uh, just like a piano or just like a car, uh, the people could put it to other kinds of uses, uh, uh, but but clearly it stops and starts with this being a medium of exchange. And the point about the store of value, as Mises didn't use the term store of value, he just used the term hoarding. He said, there are people who do hoard money, but in the age of, uh, of, of uh, capital assets like stocks and bonds, this is just something most people don't normally do because if money is the money is going to appreciate in value because prices fall then better to buy a bond because the bond appreciates in value and at the same time at the end the money appreciates in value you're nodding i'm glad because the last time i spoke about this with you you talked about the need for the liquidity of, of financial assets and of course that's exactly what financial intermediaries provide uh, that's what market makers provide. That's yeah. why this business of the story of value is just yeah. a bunch of babbling academicians. Yeah. No, 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 no. Talking. Hey, all right, G no, Gene, yes. I think it's awesome that you're saying all these things. Okay. But let me, uh, 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 then uh, stop uh, that talk. <laughs> stop, stop that dogmatic talk. It's a <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, let's, let's yeah. just back up slightly. Yeah. I, I, I did toss out this idea of the store of value. I think it was last time we were together and you and jumped you, all over me about, about it. You and, and, about it. But you know, you know what, that's you know what's great? I know, I know. But you know what's great? You know what's great about these kinds of conversations? This kind of intellectual disruption can send you back to the books, which is exactly what I, me, I did. Yes. And, okay, and and kind of, I, I want to read the passage you're referring to, which actually you rendered pretty well. Yeah. Um, Misa says, in nine, and this is specifically related to the so-called store of value function of money, right? Which I I did indeed uh, toss off like some sort of cliche without thinking about it because I never expected it to be controversial. But but here's what Misa says: as soon as the practice of employing a certain economic good as a medium of exchange becomes general, people began to store up this good in preference to others. In fact, hoarding as a form of investment plays no great part in our present stage of well, economy. that's right. No. Well, it's, yes, oh, no. so, okay. it's, it's place indeed. having taken, uh, been taken by the purchase of interest bearing property. So just hold on. That's right. That's I right. find this, I find this incredibly insightful, right? So he's making an empirical observation that in the early stages of money, as soon as people begin to acquire it in anticipation, uh, not to consume it, but in anticipation of using it in later exchange, so it becomes what he calls a medium of exchange, right? When it becomes generalized, you realize, oh, wow, I could hang on to this stuff for a little while and it's going to become more valuable, right? But uh, as, as as that that expectation becomes more entrenched, uh, then people begin to uh, discover that the yield on money held is not as high as uh, interest. Um, I mean, it's a little bit like the parable and wow. uh, parable of the talents in the Bible. You know, where where the where the master gives uh, it's it's it means it's kind of giving a spin on 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 a Jewish proverb. Uh, where the master gives uh, money to uh, to three servants, and 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 oh, one really? one buries it in the right. ground, and and he gets right, and he gets and he gets like denounced, you know, like what the hell? Why didn't you give it to the bankers? You remember that scene? Oh, oh you the bankers, you mean obviously you took okay. I'd like to Jeff, you you just made another mistake, uh, but everything you said about of course history is fine. But I, I want to, first of all, just pick up on your mistake. You do understand that if prices are going to fall by, let's say, 2% in 12 months, then the money is going to be worth 2% more. Uh, but there's no competition because then on, on top of that, you put your money in a bond that pays 3% and that matures in a year, then yeah. you make 3% plus the 2%, because when the bond pays, the money will also be worth the extra 2%. So in fact, it's not yeah. a contest. That's what, that's what you said that was mistaken. In fact, at the end, mm. it's the 2% yeah. compounding on top of the 3%. And yeah, my, yeah, only yeah. my only point, Jeff, is that I took, I, going to graduate school, I took a course in money and banking, and these mm. idiots are telling me in the circa 1970 that money is a store of value. Now, it's fine for, for, to, to say what you said. However, we're now talking about the 21st century and exactly. people, Peter Schiff and a whole slew of other people are still slavishly repeating this idiocy. Oh, I know. And, and, I know and by the way, I think that part of the reason why they do that is that is that they're such gold bugs. That's why that fallacy is committed. Well, that you, you really jump and you think very quickly and, well, you jump, well, you, and you're jumping way ahead here. Uh, but I, and I and actually I think you might be right about that because yeah. uh, the idea is that that gold preserves the value. Therefore, therefore, it is the real money. The right? store so, they, they have, look, they have the Silas yeah. Moore and Rask guy. I probably, yeah. you probably haven't read that now, but the guy puts gold in his, you know, people like to hoard gold. Hoarders, that's, what, that's by the way, the term that Mises used. All yeah. I'm trying to say is that, well, is says, that let's not be, let, let's that, let's not be these sort of, sort of useless idiots. And yeah. do that. But but you, you are absolutely right. That is what Mises said. You have this nice Talmudic mind uh, talking about Mises' point. He's making fine distinctions, and this segues, by the way, into other issues I'm going to mention. But as long as you and I agree that, but um, but I, I just would like to reflect on this just a little okay. bit more. And in the first place, let's point yeah. out that Mises's book, I think we all agree, is 
probably the purest, closest thing we have to a definitive treatise on on money, its function, its origin, every blah, blah, blah. I mean, that book is just well, mighty and, and it, it's a little bit slow going, but but Mises had to kind of like reconstruct everything and, and why? Hmm. Um, because I think uh, Thomas Knapp, Knapp, I guess his name, K-N-A-P-P, his book uh, called The State Theory of Money, it came out in I think 1907. In which, uh, and let's let's not get too far afield here. I mean, the, oh, well. Mises wrote this wrote <laughs> this book in opposition to. Uh, I mean, like Germany was the source of all terrible things actually at this time. I mean, you know, the German historical school, uh, uh, historicism, Hegelianism, so, you know, socialism, and now with the the Nap book and the Nap book, uh, the State Theory of Money, which argued that. Uh, money, uh, the value of money is conferred upon a money by by government. That it's a it's a uh, a function of public authority to uh, to uh, codify a money and sustain its value, and that it has nothing whatsoever to the, do with the market. Right. So, mm -hmm. so Mises really goes, you know, it has to write an entire book basically debunking the state theory of money and everything that's associated with it. And mm -hmm. and the the results are beautiful. So anyway, I'm mm -hmm. I'm grateful to Eugene because I, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, on the store value point, it was interesting that you were going crazy in graduate school with the people uh, yammering on about this all the time. But I have kind of I guess I, I I haven't like invested myself intellectually in the idea that 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 money the function of money is to be a store of value. But I, I was repeating this like like cliche. But I'm I'm very glad to have gone back to Mises. And and been able to discover, you know, and discern mm -hmm. from, the, from the clear passages. And we're not, and let's just be clear, we're, we're not like citing Mises as some godlike figure who knows all things. The point is he makes his case, you know. Well, he does. With, By the way, I, I want to, I, I, I will mention a few things that I'm not sure uh, Mises goes into, but uh, but uh, that comes later. I, I, as long as you and I agree now, for purposes. We do. Let's connect this I, with Bitcoin because the cryptocurrency, because in a way that's, that's, the that's it's just a, it's just that when when Peter Schiff and others they start listing these purposes of money, we'll get to others uh, having to do with uh, with whether it, it it can have a fixed value in terms of of, of measuring things. You and I agreed as well. Uh, as Mises pointed out, that again, it's just a medium of exchange, and and if it's used to measure things, that's always in flux. It's not it's not a yardstick. The the that's only right. confusion, by the way, is that when uh, when you have ex an, uh, dollars or euros exchanged for gold, then that's fixed. You know that yeah. that, that anchors government, but but the pro but prices mm -hmm. themselves are not fixed. So They're let me let me ask you then, in light of that, go yeah. ahead. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts on this because. Yeah. This this word stable yeah. is always thrown around about money. Like like if it's going to be a money, it's got to be a stable value. A yeah. stable stable values. It's got to have stability value. And people attack Bitcoin because it goes up and down. So, what is what is your what is your feeling about this 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 uh, 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 this this feature uh, of money that that it that it somehow uh, the 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 soundness of the money is is contingently uh, tied to its stability. You know, relative to its uh, purchasing power for goods and services, what's your what's your opinion about that? Well, okay, the now, now you're using the term uh, stability, and uh, and 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 that's a, a different concept. Uh, it's not a measuring rod, but clearly, uh, as uh, perhaps I, I get the point you're getting at, which is that uh, which is that for something to be money, for, for me to accept money today again is based upon my knowledge that yesterday I bought things. And for me to accept, say, you know, a thousand dollar fee for doing something is based upon my general idea of what a thousand dollars can buy, and uh, and and the the instability uh, of money is usually introduced by government. But uh, in normal circumstances, that money has to be scarce and and not change radically, so that what it could buy yesterday has could, has got to be approximately give or take the same uh, that it could buy uh, uh, today and that it can buy tomorrow. So therefore, we do indeed require that kind of stability and that kind of stability is addressed by Satoshi who set up 
Bitcoin and addressed potentially by gold because uh, by the fact that the supply is not going to vary uh, greatly. I see. So, yeah. OK, so for you, it's a function of supply, which is well, which course. is which, uh, and which you can't you can't stabilize demand, obviously, because that's a the, no, know, condition exactly. on, on human data, evolution. But, but data, supply yeah. is a, f a physical feature in yeah. that sense. In that yeah. sense. Um, yeah. Uh, the uh, B Bitcoin stability is 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 as good as 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 gold, uh, well, and even and even it. even maybe even better because, well, you, you, because uh, yeah. Now that that gets into another issue about Bitcoin, which I did want to return to. I guess I guess the one thing I want in terms of what might be contentious between you and me, however, let me j just make sure that we deal with this. Uh, uh, why is there a pronounced tendency for there to be one money, uh, uh, two money? Okay, let me. Make I, the, other, the pronounced tendency is very, very clear, which is that, which is that everybody, except for certain misanthropic types who do exist, or not nutty people in other ways, generally speaking, want to be paid in money uh, that everyone else can accept because we want the maximum potential power over this money and also we don't want to go through the hassles of of, of of having to exchange our money for something else we don't want to go through the unpredictability of what that money is going to be worth in relation to some other money and again that's the reason why why 90 percent of the trading that's done internationally is done in dollars because dollars are the most convenient medium most liquid. internationally yeah the most liquid but also everyone wants to have a short pencil and gravitate to the money that's most universally accepted so that's why there's a there's an overwhelming tendency uh, for there to be one money, maybe a second one. Mises actually wrote, he seemed to be open-minded about the possibility that maybe there would have been gold and silver, silver for smaller transactions. Mm -hmm. Government stepped in too soon. Well, but, I mean, histor but historically, yeah. we, saw, we saw all kinds of things being used for money, well, uh, all, all but, kinds of precious metals, even, even in the 18th century. I'm not talking well, about... Okay. And I'm not talking about like salt in the Middle Ages or wampum, you know, uh, you know, or something like that. I'm talking about, you know, in in uh, I don't know if you've read George Selgin's book, uh, Good Good Money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, 18th century uh, Britain. <coughs> that that uh, small small change basically oh, yes, for, yeah. for yeah. factory workers would, would take place with 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 bronze coins yeah. and various other metals like anything of, of value. So. Mm -hmm. um so so uh and and there was a floating exchange relationship between yeah uh the various forms of specie well, which I'm which is extremely I'm important unlike the 19th century right where where we made this weird uh mistake would we uh the united states and and actually fixed the relationship between well, uh, silver I mean, and gold Jeff, and a Jeff, by, Jeff, by Jeff, Jeff, let, me, let me ask you this and now, by the way, I think Bitcoin, the small change issue, by the way, given the given the ability for Bitcoin to be decimalized, sure. Uh, you know, we, we, we have that. a thing called the Satoshi. What is it? That that small unit of a mm -hmm. Bitcoin. I, I think it speaks to that. However, yes, it does. Except, I, I won't quibble over the possibility that maybe there'd be three monies or other kinds of weird things going on. But you do grant my point that 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 there tends to be a huge network effect with money, and that and that and the and I say that only because I, I won't I won't mention it. Actually, w one of my free market friends actually thinks that government should run the money supply because otherwise there's going to be balkanization of money. It's going to be a big mess, is what he thinks. But my only point is is for you balkanization of money. <laughs> Well, the balkanization of money, indeed. Obviously, it's going to be a big mess if we let the free market do. We got, we have to have a <laughs> government step in. My, my point, my point is only that balkanization happens with nation states when they start printing their own money because because the powers that be in each nation state want power over the money supply. Mm -hmm. But on the on the contrary, the the, the market tends toward one or two monies. That's all I'm trying If What do you want to say? Three, fine. I'm only trying to ask you to understand that as somebody who supposedly understands the nature of money, that people naturally want to gravitate toward the kind of money that everybody else uses and everybody else wants to do the same. And that's the network effect. That's the powerful influence of money, the powerful tendency. And you apparently are not nodding, Jeff. You're Still don't understand what I'm trying to explain to you. <laughs> you have a problem with what I'm trying to get across. All right, all right. Let me ask you this. I, oh, I have a, I have a question for you, and it's not yeah. a rhetorical question. Yeah. Is there a tendency in the market for <clears throat> all, all profits to fall to zero? Of course not. 
what you mean? Well, the reason why the, the reason is, the reason is because of risk and time prof preference. Well, I mean, time preference definitely. Uh, uh, but uh, if you want to abolish risk, but <clears throat> but certainly there's time preference. You, you do understand time preference? All right. So <laughs> I mean, but, unless you want to try and, to start and like 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 it, like in in, in <clears throat> economics, we, we sometimes isolate uh, uh, factors of of change. <clears throat> Uh, factors of uncertainty, you know, uh, if you want to call it gender equilibrium or, or Mises' case, the evenly rotating economy, or sometimes well, that, you, a, you, you, you isolate and separate <laughs> out uh, the, th things like, like, like risk and uncertainty and change and change in preferences well, well, and innovation. You do all these things so you can, you can understand a, 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 an isolated a part. Well, of, Jeff, that's a very bad analogy, but I see where you're okay. going. So, so yeah, okay. So yeah. my point okay. is yeah. that uh, there's there's always that in in some uh, uh, theoretical sense mm -hmm. there's uh, there's always a tendency for 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 profits to fall to zero because because that's ridiculous. Of, that's because ridiculous. Of, uh, okay, because of because of the presence of uh, because of, of competition and 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 arbitrage and and if there's no innovation, I mean, this is what happens. I mean, and in fact, there is. Jeff, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not talking about, wait, I'm not talking about interest. I'm talking about profits. Okay. Okay. Yes. So don't okay. talk. Well, don't give me this well, time well, preference. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah. I'm sorry to. Uh, yeah, Jeff, what, 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 what about what about look? There are many capitalists who do not borrow. They 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 they, they put up their own money to do something uh, with a venture, <clears throat> and they have to be paid. It isn't necessarily the case that we would even have a bond market. That just happens to be a convention. The fact of the matter is that in a Caruso economy, if, if Caruso and Friday do something that's a lead pipe cinch, they, they need a profit to uh, out of it because they're going to be deferring their consumption. But again, the evenly rotating right, but economy, that's, but that's, uh, by the way, the, you know the only reason why, you should read a little bit Rothbard, Jeff, uh, that maybe you haven't. <laughs> You, you know, the only reason why people hold money is because of uncertainty. The point that's been made over and over again, the right. Rothbard in particular, possibly uh, right. by Mises, by the way, right. is that is that is that the only reason why we have any kind of demand for money is because of the unpredictability. I have to do this to <laughs> get the light. Right, no, listen. this doesn't work now. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, 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 so and in your perfect, yeah, perfect this, world, this the light point, stays on forever. Right? This abstract point of view is just, is pretty hopeless. The, the, the only point is that that, that yeah, is a we there's a lot of money. there's always there's a lot of tendencies in the market like for the marginal productivity of work marginal productivity of workers to equal wages for for profits to fall to zero uh you know by profits i mean i don't mean i don't mean rent and i don't mean time profits all right okay. there's a lot of tendencies in the market right uh there's there's a, a tendency for for well I mean, there's 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 forces at work and I, and i agree with you that in, in some ideal world of your own intellectual construction, that there's going to be a tendency towards a this single is, this is a, the But here, you know, you know what, wait, what it misses is, and I think this is extremely important here, and I've thought a lot about it. You have, you have wasted like 10 hours of my time for the last week thinking about this point, and I finally figured it out. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Innovation. Uh, uh, that's that's what makes a difference. It, crypto is a new experiment in the world. I don't know why you you believe that somehow you know Bitcoin's got it right or anybody's got it right. We may not know yet what the right currency is, and 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 there might be the right currency to come along next year, and and there'll be a mad rush towards it, and then the next year somebody something else comes along, something better, a more private, quicker, a more scalable. You can I, I don't know. That's the point. We don't know. Let's 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 think about about Hayek here. His his point was that that we don't always entirely know what the right uh, thing is going to be. We have to unleash entrepreneurs on this. And I get why you, you don't understand it because we haven't had entrepreneurship in money in like a hundred years, you know. And and so all I'm saying is that I fully expect choice and currency. I I expect that this mad competitive environment of I don't know is it a dozen? Is it 1,200? Is it 12,000? I don't know. That's the point. Uh, let's let's reflect on 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 okay. on, on Hayek's uh, the theory of knowledge here. So that's the thing is we now suddenly see what a free market money might look like, and I'm guessing that it's going to look a lot more like like Hayek's choice and currency than it is going to look like some unitary 
uh, tendency towards towards uh, one single thing, precisely because we want something better all the time, and we don't know what that is yet. And I'm looking forward to that world. Okay. Yeah. All right, Jeff. I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. I've heard yeah. your point. And, um, so that's let, why I think let, you're wrong. Let, 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 okay. I, I hear yeah. you. Let me just yeah. respond to the point and 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 say the following. The 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 thing that uh, the analogies you're drawing having to do with the tendency towards something which isn't quite met. It, is is misplaced only for this reason. The reason is that to begin with, people. Uh, I'm talking about the, the relief of uneasiness. People want to accept money uh, that that everybody else accepts, uh, or, or uh, and and that is the concept of the network effect. And but and I will get to Hayek in a moment because it's not as though Hayek is irrelevant. The Hayekian or the or the entrepreneurship or the choice in currency. I'm only saying that 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 uh, just as just as the first person who bought a telephone had nobody to call because nobody else had yet bought a telephone. The first person who used the internet had nobody to communicate with or email. The first person who used, used, used email. My only point is that there, there are lots of things in which where people have to participate en masse. They want, they want, they want in, a, in a division of, a, of, of, of labor economy, people want the currency that's most usable at any time. So I'm only trying to say that there's a powerful network effect. And once the network effect uh, is put in place, it's hard to dislodge it. Now, so, uh, now so I, I, I agree with that. Let me. No, 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 I bring in the choice. Let me just bring in the choice. To yeah. the report. Now I bring in the choice. Indeed. It could be dislodged. It's not as though it's impossible. Yeah. But um, okay, all right. Then if, if, all, if all you agree, if you're granting the powerful network effect with respect to money, which doesn't mm -hmm. exist, by the way, with respect to most other goods and services, then that's my only point. Did you and say it does or it doesn't? It, it does not. Does not. There's not. There's no. No. I mean, only only with respect to no network effect, effect associated with you know no. the QWERTY QWERTY keyboard with uh, well, with oh. with the well, tendency to buy Kleenex. Because it's got the name Kleenex on it. There's well, there's networks of, uh, well, there's, or, uh, there's networks to, to, well, to like a certain a song in the summer because everybody else freaking does. Well, I mean, network well, effects are yeah, everywhere. Well, 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 okay, all of those are decent enough analogies. There are many many network effects. Maybe I overstated, but I'm only trying to say that if there are 110 brands of toothpaste and whatever you're using in the bathroom, yeah, there will be a tendency for me to dominant brands. I got to use Colgate because everybody else does. Conformity is. Definitely there, but but it's a perfectly possible for somebody to strike out on his own and say, "Well, I'm special. I just put you salt water." All of that stuff. There's no there's no there's no dependency on other people as there is with money. If I, the, the money I've got has got to be acceptable. To I I you know, you know Gene. But, I, but you want to, you I, want to go beyond my point and say the network I, effect is ubiquitous. Okay, I think it is. yeah, but I, I for some reason, Gene, you keep treating money as if, and I've heard other people do this, as if some sort of special. Special, rarefied, Jeff, unusual, I strange. Jeff, uh, I, Jeff, Jeff, there are many network effects. If you, okay. again, I, I use the analogy with email, with a phone call, with with, with so much else. Where where my consuming something uh, 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 depends on other people. And if you want, so indeed, there are many such analogies. Indeed. I'm, uh, I'm saying precisely that point, which is that money is not special in that regard, but it exactly. is a network, a networked effect, uh, affected commodity. That's all. And you uh, I, you know, but, but, but as 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 human labor, as as as, as so many things, uh, the 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 whole market is one big network, I and mean, we're well, all dependent upon well, everything. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I can't buy a lawnmower unless I've got replacement parts for it. I mean, the, we're all tied together, and all makes sense. But why? But so so. Why then don't you see the and possibility of the market to give us a range of 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 monies? Also, Th well, these are not inconsistent. You can have a network effect. Really, you can right? have, I mean, you can have the song of the summer and also ten thousand other songs at the same time. That's all I'm saying. There is a tendency for everybody to go on Facebook. That's all, that, that, yeah. and because, because everybody else goes on Facebook. That that and and that's because Facebook is a means of communicating with others. Tr you seem to be continually missing that point. That, but 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 if I hire a masseur, if I go to a shrink, uh, if 
If, if I hire somebody else with some specialized task, I'm not dependent on others. Uh, they, let a, Actually, let a hundred flowers bloom. In why that do, why, wait, why do you go to the shrink? Facebook, right? You go to a shrink to get them to get, so you can start behaving like a normal person so you can be network, networked with other people. It, it I mean, everything well, we do is connected my with kind of shrink, My kind of shrink may well be a different kind. I, I, might read, I, I might read books that nobody else wants to read. The, the many ways in which commodities work that uh, we, we are no network effect except in terms of people's desire to conform but in terms of real dependence the thing itself money has to be a medium of exchange with others now again yep. i'm trying to cool you down by granting that it okay. does not mean that if bitcoin is the dominant money for a decade or two that it won't be replaced by something even better all i'm trying to say is that there will be it just like in the case of facebook it's dominating however it could it could pass in a couple of days or yeah. a couple of years all of those things happen, but oh, network okay, but, but, can, but which are dependent we, on others specifically, not just because of our conformist tendencies, but be, yeah. because of practical considerations. Yeah. Practical considerations. But, is but, can, but here's what I here's what I'm hearing you say. Hmm. I'm hearing you say that to the extent that we don't have a single unitary money, that's a that's a mistake in the market. And I, I, what I'm saying is that that is the market to have a multiplicity of choice, endless innovations, and it's not as okay. you were in, in your linear strange way thinking there's episodic shifts from money to money oh 10 years oh thanks a lot gene for your permission to change money another oh, 10 years okay. goes by uh, well that's what you said. you said you said you said a decade i'm saying that we can have simultaneous uh, multiplicity of 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 currencies uh just like you see in coin market cap today and it's, and and, it's, and, it's, and yes there may be okay. one on top but the, but they're they're exchangeable with each other there's innovations within them it's a it's an ongoing competition and i think that is okay. beautiful and okay. i'm not going to Again, to game it. again, the only, the only, as I've tried to explain to you, first of all, I, I know amazingly you just talked about a, a, a market in money that we have today. We obviously have money dominated by nation states, by yes. law. So therefore, that's, that's completely wrong. All I said was that where international trade can happen, amazingly, there is a preference to use one money, which 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 is a matter. But by the way, that won't necessarily last for good. It may be replaced perhaps replaced by bitcoin perhaps replaced by gold perhaps replaced by the uh, by the chinese currency the yuan but my point is that just as similarly facebook is dominant now but, yeah. and that's okay now that you said yes that's well, all i'm trying to get uh, you to say. but but, but that's yeah. true by but wait that's true by definition not by definition. Know, again mean, in terms of the in terms of the very practical nature of what is being bought. What is being bought is dependent on networking with others. That's not toothpaste. To you might buy the same toothpaste out of conformist reasons, but not because you're brushing your teeth with that toothpaste is dependent on other people doing the same brush. I, I, I look at as a means of communication. Money is a medium of exchange. That's mm -hmm. the point. I will rest my case because I assume our listeners understand what I'm getting at. <laughs> Jeff, you should probably ruminate on that. I feel, I feel like, I, 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 yeah. Um, if, if, I'll if let you have the last word. Uh, we'll go into yeah, my next topic. Actually, uh, um, and I, by the way, I want to get to this, uh, just in any way, uh, let me just say in any race, somebody is going to be ahead at any one moment. That's, that's the point I about the choice. Right. There will so be a that's, network. There I mean, will be a dominant. I, I, people want to use the money that everybody else uses. It's dependent on what everybody else uses. It's a network I, I, commodity I, I, in the sense that toothpaste is not. And just like Facebook is, just like certain other commodities are, you're networked with others. That's I, 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 I could probably argue that toothpaste is a network commodity, but oh, because, but, of, but, but, because but, of conformity. But again, you're uh, off yes. on cloud nine, Jeff. I'll let you have the last word. We should get on to some other topics. Yeah, but you know, what, you, topic. know what, you know what? You want to look like? Let's talk about somebody you know somebody about more than I do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but Jeff, do you want to look? Uh, we, we both we both spoken a piece about this. I want to get onto something else where you and I will probably agree. Yeah. And, and actually, uh, well, are you going to talk about about the 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 lira uh, the lira? Uh, devaluation over the weekend? I mean, I found this to okay. be. Uh, ex well, extraordinary what what just happened. I mean, happened. you I had know. you had you, well, okay. Well, if you don't know about it, I mean, well, what does it have to do with Bitcoin, Jeff? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I'll tell you, yeah, it, it is interesting. We can go back to make a, let's get to the subject. I, I think I think okay. I, it's just it was maybe some other time, but I okay. I think that Trump has shown us.
yeah. over the last three days how how the how the uh, the the next economic crisis comes about. I mean, I mean okay. the lira fell. He doubled tariffs because he saw it as an attack, you know, on on his trade policies because oh now the lira is cheap and they're going to be invading us with goods. So he doubled just like that with an executive order oh tariffs gosh. on Turkey and Turkey only, yeah. and and then caused raiders, market raiders, to just tip the currency into living hell. Well, that's and it's yeah, down. We, we so a, it's yeah, like let's have, let's have a, I'd that's be better, freaking let's, crazy. Let's have a structured discussion on, yeah. on the financial but, places and other related. But I want to talk right. about more about the abstract issues involving cryptocurrency and, and, and Bitcoin. We've, we've had, we've just had our disagreement about network effects of money. Yeah. That's fine. Toothpaste and money are the same thing. That's according to Jeff. I said they're different. The brush, but that aside. Okay. I, I want to talk about a, 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 a terrible mistake uh, that Bitcoin enthusiasts seem to make. I certainly discovered it in the ah. very, on the very good book, Called Digital Gold by Nathaniel. I like Hopper. that book. I like that book well, a lot. Yeah. Well, but I'll tell you this. I don't know if you noticed the passage in which uh, uh, a Popper uh, ac actually completely credits the idea that gold really wasn't the original money, and that and that barter and that the whole story that the Austrians like to tell is not really valid. Uh, I, and 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 who's been very good on this, by the way, most recently is the, uh, the economist you mentioned. Uh, 10 minutes ago, George Selgin. Uh, yeah. Selgin has corrected a lot of these fallacies, but I want to go into what the fallacy is uh, and how it's partly right, but completely misses the point. The, uh, the idea, Popper, Nathaniel Popper actually says that the Bitcoin enthusiast discovered by reading the anthropologists that that uh, oh. that exchange actually uh, originated in credit. 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 You know, you know what you know, you know what credit is? Credit credit is really that 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 how do, how do we facilitate an exchange? Well, I want your cow and all I have is eggs. So yeah. what happens is that I take your cow and I agree to give you, you know, four eggs a week for you know for however many weeks it's gonna take for me to pay off the cow, the, the purchase of the cow. And it's and 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 as Selgin points out, it's not as though uh, this uh, eluded uh, the wisdom or insight of Karl Common. Menger, the, the original Austrian who wrote about this. People gifted things to each other in small communities. People would indeed sort of borrow sure. commodities from each other. Uh, and all that did happen. And so what is the point? Because, because clearly, once you begin to broaden the need to exchange in a division of labor society, uh, you can't just do it that way. You're not going to gift something to a stranger, and and the idea of some kind of informal agreement. I'll give you the eggs for the and and apart from that, that's really just very similar to to any kind of credit transaction. But that's something people earlier, very possibly, very probably did with with kit with people as part of their tribe. That all probably happened. But the idea that uh, that we can't that that we didn't ultimately need some medium of exchange when strangers interacted in a division of labor society that's the point that uh, that these anthropologists completely well, missed. Well, tell, tell me the, how the book yeah. Digital Gold relates that so-called discovery, which well, I know it happened right. like well, ten years you. ago, and it was a tedious discovery. How wh how do they think that that relates to the well, origin it, of the it, plot? what it tries to do? See, this is the interesting sort of debate among losers. What it tr what it tries to do is the, the Bitcoin uh, enthusiasts, uh, or the, let's just call them the crypto enthusiasts, uh, uh, convince themselves that that it was seductive to start believing in this and oh. believing in this idea that 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 the idea of-, of That it's going to be valuable. Well, no, 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 no. That, 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 that we can that, that we can we can liberate ourselves from this idea that gold was ever money really it just was maybe it was brought up by government it, it, we didn't have bar, we didn't have the story that that people were bartering with each other and then they hit upon a commodity to trade with it was really all that it originated with credit transactions uh, and that there's a book by and it's for anthropologist by named David Graeber professor mm -hmm. of anthropology called mm -hmm. death the first 5000 years he says yeah. that 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 Menger and Smith, who wrote mm -hmm. about the origins mm -hmm. of money in this way, mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. missed the point of a credit mm -hmm. transaction. So therefore, mm -hmm. and and the and the crypto people have found this seductive because it tends to dislodge gold as ever having mattered. It, uh, that's in their mind that it does. And and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, Selton points out that Menger 
and Smith did not miss this point. They they themselves specifically wrote that early societies, they had some kind of maybe informal debt transactions where I would borrow, I would take your cow and pay you back. And, 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 the, and these might even be based on labor, right? So, so, uh, so oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so, oh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, you, you've got some surplus eggs, you give them to me and, 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 and when the weather gets better, I'll come out and help that, you re-roof your cabin. Head, I, don't you, I don't know if you've read your Old Testament, but that's, in the Bible, where where Jacob labors for his uh, his father in law in order to pay off his debt for his first wife seven yeah. years, and then he's got oh, he's got to accept the first sister, and he's got to work another seven years for the second sister. Hey, that's, that's been, a lot that's of complications. That's, that's I mean, that's, that's 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 way too complicated. <laughs> well, that was in that sexist book called the Old Testament, in which <laughs> were bought, daughters were bought. But but works it off you know, seven years, and he has to accept one sister, and then he gets the next sister by working it off for another second seven years. So indeed, that kind of stuff happened, and Menger knew about it. And uh, but there but there's an incredible hang up on the part of Graeber and others. They start saying that well, those transactions had nothing to do with money, government. I mean, again, it's a complete non sequitur. They missed the point. But what's funny is that uh, is that Selgin wrote. Um, a critique, and uh, and Graeber responded with vitriolic uh, really? uh, tweets, and and he, and uh, Selgin uh, pointed out that that when it comes to having to transact with people who aren't in your kinship, aren't in your tribe, that yes. then they, then then some kind of medium of exchange begins to arise. Then you yeah. see the problem with bartering. Uh, yeah, ge ge geographic non -con -con contiguity is well, geographic right? exactly because yeah, I'm, I'm saying division of labor because indeed I guess different geographies traded with each other. But here's something really funny, which I think is worth quoting because it shows how crazy this professor of anthropology is. He writes responding to Selgin uh, that no, no strangers. This never happened because he says, he writes, you don't cross mountains, deserts, and oceans, risking death in a dozen different ways so as to show up with a collection of goods you think someone might want in order to see if they happen to have something you might want. He's saying this is ridiculous. And I, I wrote Selgin, which Selgin, of course, points out, well, did he ever heard here of merchants and traders? And do you ever hear of, now, I, I pointed out, this is what this is funny about is that, is that while I regard schooling as pretty warped with respect to economics, the one thing they hammer home to you is all the stories about traders and trade routes and traders like Marco Polo. You know, obviously, trade with, with, over oceans and over the Mediterranean was very important. If you read uh, the Merchant of Venice, Antonio was having ships come in, and and how the heck can they trade unless they're using some kind of medium? Of, of course, and I mean this <laughs> happened in all of our own families. I mean, my my great great grandfather moved from. Massachusetts down to Texas, but on his way, yeah. went to New Orleans and picked up, you know, a wagon full of goods to go trade them in Texas and so on. I mean, this and then he just, had yeah. to accept some kind, of, probably accepted some kind of medium in exchange for them. Uh, and uh, and and I'm, I only go into that because the Atlantic, the uh, the supposedly uh, sophisticated magazine edited by John Stossel's nephew, as you probably know. Scott I didn't Stossel. know that. Yeah, yeah, Scott ah. Stock. Scott Stossel does it has, has, by the way, he wrote a very good uh, memoir of his own about anxiety attacks, about his life with anxiety. Uh, he did write that his uncle John believes in all kinds of crazy libertarian stuff. And, <laughs> and Scott, Scott went ahead and published this article in The Atlantic uh, by an anthropologist saying those money guys have it all wrong. It all started with credit transactions. You know, but, you know, I, I'm guess I'm guessing that, and I I hate to I don't want to take like a, a pot shot here or anything, but oh. so often what happens is that people and Trump's a good example stumble into economics without ever having studied it or without really understanding it. You know, they end up pr pronouncing on the topic while well, well, yeah. never having actually uh, sat down and and well, yeah, undertaken you know, you know, the you know, discipline to to yes. to. To to, to well, rock the whole well, subject. Yes, and of course I'm ambivalent about that because because certainly the hatred the hatred of certain uh, economists uh, I hate a lot of them myself. You know, I mean my my point is you know the emphasis by you know, the, the the idea of Chicago man as constantly calculating at every stage. You know what what he's going to do next. This kind of this idea that oh it's all about money and gain and and yeah, and, and there's plenty wrong with with conventional economics. Is true. You mean? 
there's plenty wrong with conventional economics, yes. but but and, but and it, can, it can engender an hostility in people. So I sort of understand that. Uh, yeah, that they feel that. But but indeed, obviously, then to go into this crackpot theory and to publish it in the Atlantic. But I but getting back to the crypto people, my 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 point is, to, to them is this: really, there was indeed gifting. There wasn't. There were indeed informal transactions. You'd work it off just like you said, Jeff, which happens in the Bible. You you'd you'd get the cow and you'd pay off in eggs, mm -hmm. probably these things happen. Mengo wrote about it. Smith actually referred to it. I mean, maybe Mises didn't even feel the need to refer to it, but but uh, but certainly it's been granted. Obviously, everybody knows about it, but once the world opened up, barter and medium of exchange became... I don't understand, I don't understand how that relates to the early years of Bitcoin, because I mean, uh, mm -hmm. what, what... And because I guess the, I guess the question... The, the question is like, how did Bitcoin go in, 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 from the Genesis block in January of 2009 uh, to obtaining something like a market prize by October 5th of 2009. Well, that's what Papa writes about, the and, pizza and, pies. Yeah, pizza and, pies. And, no, no, that was way later. Uh, was it? I mean, yeah, okay, well. I mean, October 5th oh, of 2009 was the first posted price of Bitcoin, which I I, okay. I consider that to, to be the date of the birth of, of, of the modern, essentially. Well, okay, uh, but okay, now we're getting into, I think... Uh, the, the what happened which, between but, but those dates? I, 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 I just want to emphasize, I'm not clear that I made, you said you don't understand why they care about it. I'm only saying that that this is a this is a somewhat sort of infantile rebellion on the part of the crypto people against the gold bugs. They want to say no, no, guy. They want to say no. Look, we we're going to go with this with these anthropologist guys because you know your your idea that gold ever mattered or it ever arose in some way. All your stories, you know, we don't believe them. So that's what I'm saying is infantile. Ah. Enough. I'm saying they don't have to make this argument. No, we, this is I, outrageous. I mean, look, look I look. The, the, I, I think the story of Bitcoin's value is, is a very interesting one. Yeah. I think it's fascinating that many people uh, uh, that were there at the time, even now, don't understand it, even though they were participating in, in the process that led to Bitcoin obtaining a market price. And, and to me, it's, it's, it's clear. I mean, you can go back and look at, at, at the audit trail of what was happening between January and October, and there were, on average, about 100 transactions a day. I see. Yeah. So and what? So what were they transacting? Well, well, I, I think. I mean, I, I, what I know. What were they it, doing? I guess, I guess what was you, the point? You know more what's about the point. What's the point of? Well, what's say, the point of me sending something to you and you sending it back to me if that something is uh, has a zero value? Uh, why would you do that? And why would I do that to you? Because we're testing and trying a a, a new method of 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 bundling up immutable information packets and transferring them virtually for free and instantly uh, across a, a network that has uh, that's not geographically contingent, right? Well, okay, I mean, that, okay. And that that is a very impressive feat. Just okay. technologically speaking, that is by itself amazing. So if you can do that and do that reliably, that independent of the value of Bitcoin is by itself an awesome service okay right? exactly okay that, that but yeah. that's okay but 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 again i you've you i the only thing i would add to that i, I think your your arguments are a little bit too abstract but the, i would add to this i would say that the quotes that i read from satoshi quoted by uh popper in his book show that ah. satoshi satoshi had somehow or other either read Mises or at least somebody taught it to him because he recognized or read hayek about choice and currency he recognized uh, that the attempts, perhaps you recognize even earlier, that the attempts for, uh, to create a private sector money failed because nobody could trust the scarcity part of it. And that's that's a big exactly. Breakthrough. No, no, no. That that is the great breakthrough. And that was, that was said, I want this to become money. I want this to become a medium yeah. exchange. Or worse to that effect. And I believe that the pizza transaction was important, as it's certainly Popper uh, in his book convinces me that it was, that, was, that this can be money. Uh, and that, then just as you said, I've set up a mechanism whereby this can be in a, a medium exchange because it can trade, because we yeah, have a yeah, but the, but the, but the, but the, but the, but the, the first, the first value was not in Bitcoin, obviously, because it had zero price. I mean, as far as we know, right? Well, initially, yeah. I mean, there, there, uh, at least, at least there, there wasn't a, a, a posted price that was above zero. And that happened, uh, you know, on Oct October 5th, as I said, and that was just the first posted price. There might've been other exchanges that, you know, uh, have were priced and we just don't, 
know about them. So, so what was the first, the first good in question was just the, the capacity to do this, this weird thing of transferring peer to peer uh, immutable information packs, packets with a perfect audit trail yeah. uh, and, and, to, and to watch the protocol work, you know, release. Uh, and, and then the knowledge about, hopefully the knowledge about about a medium of change, which Satoshi maybe, had. but yeah. but it, well, but but and and that that came that came later. But but you know, if the point of Bitcoin was to become valuable, then it clearly didn't work for ten months. And I, I, my right. point is that it didn't work for the ten, first ten months. My point is that there was a, a value in in observing the the process of oh. of transferring uh, the inf information transfers themselves and creating this perfect audit trail and all the things we know okay. is is it secure does the protocol work does it crash is there a certain scaling that can take place you know who well, exactly. uh, how, how, how can you yeah. Yeah. yeah is it is it uh is it, is it can it is it trustless and so on i mean and all these features satoshi's programs which indeed happened as popper says absolutely yeah. Yeah, okay. so it's but, it's it's ingenious and then well, and then gradually and it took and i i think people don't talk about this enough because because you know Menger tells the story of 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 the origin of money as as a kind of an unfolding of a process over time you know a, a kind of a discovery there's an entrepreneurship associated with it like i think this could be money let's see how it goes i'm going to obtain this and see if it well, trades oh nobody well, wants well that. i can exchange again the cows and the eggs uh, if again yeah. if you're a stranger so I, or I, i'm trading with you i have to, i have to accept something that other people will accept yeah. that by the way the network issue but and, but and I, you I, don't <laughs> Yeah. But but you don't necessarily know what that is, and you're not sure which 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 well, um, which which thing well, is going to. Well, we know that. But we know by, that. Well, 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 by the way, let me tell you the story. But perhaps it is apt. You probably know the story of the British POW camp, where the care packages arrived, and and people people wanted to uh, wanted uh, not everybody wanted what was in his care package. So very quickly they were using cigarettes as a medium of exchange because everybody in the army smoked, and yeah, and so but, so that was easily traded. But but, but also. Also, Gene. I mean, the, I mean, I don't know why everybody resorts to this ancient story of the the, the cigarettes and the and the. Well, and the, I only it, resorted to it once. Okay. I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> but I'm saying that you resort. You use the thing that most other people will want. That's okay. Well, my point is that every single prison in this country, and there are many, um, has has its own currency. Uh, and and well, it's a, uh, that's why they okay yeah, yeah. And, and 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 it's and it's ramen noodles and it's mackerel cans and it's something else and it might even be services but every prison well, economy is different. People don't smoke the way they used to. But but uh, okay. But in any case, my, my, <laughs> but uh, but this segues in a way. I'm saying that the delusion about how gold never mattered uh, on the part of certainly Popper, the Popper, Nathaniel Popper wrote this very good book clearly is suffering under a delusion. He does believe this stuff. This I was appalled uh, when I read I just, this passage in which he say, oh, they discovered that that uh, it was I, all credit and all that stuff. But I, uh, I, I don't, I don't know how, how I can't even understand uh, the, the relationship of that to any Bitcoiner who would embrace that theory. Because I mean, when I read he Satoshi, it's true. thrown gold. That's what I'm trying that's to explain. Really that's really interesting. But when I read uh, Satoshi, at least when I reflect on the structure of Bitcoin, I, I, I can discern a number of intellectual influences there. I mean, clearly, I, I think you have to, yes, Mises, but I think especially Rothbard uh, and and Rothbard's sometimes it, sometimes misdirected attacks on fractional reserve banking, but I I think that 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 was a major factor in this idea of final settle instant final final settlement. You know, there's 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 no counterparty risk. You know, or at least it's minimized. And and you've got this sort of idea of the the Kersnerian entrepreneur. We're going to discover something uh, new. We've got Menger in there with the story of the unfolding of. Of uh, 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 the invention of money growing out of uh, some 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 good or service that had a pre-existing pre value in the market, and and that would in this case be uh, a technology that overcomes the the Byzantine general's problem, and 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 I would say uh, Schumpeter it plays a role oh, wow. here, well, okay. and, and 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 celebrating that you know the disruptive potential. Well, you know, you may of, be right. Um, you, did Satoshi uh, probably understandably did not want to mention any of these names for fear of putting people off. You know, as uh, you know, we, we we don't want to make this all about ideology. Oh, and, and, and I feel bad that I left out Hayek here, right? Who who mm -hmm. actually called for the denationalization of money. I mean, here's but, a guy who who fought his entire life for the gold standard, and then one day one day said, "Ha." 
okay. we gotta have we gotta have another plan. We yeah, gotta have another plan. Yeah. Murray, Murray, as far as that went, Murray was correct. Murray Rothbard was correct in mocking Hayek by saying that the trouble is that you've got to have something scarce, and Satoshi was the one who solved that problem. So, so maybe Hayek was half right, but he was also half wrong because you couldn't try. He said, "I can issue Hayek's, and he can issue Hayek's. I can issue." You know, Rothbard. I don't think but, Hayek but solved everything. He didn't solve everything, and okay. uh, there, there was, there was, a, there was a slight problem with the denationalization things because he didn't solve the scarcity problem because he didn't. I mean, it was 1974. But Jeff, I, wa I wanted to go on. We probably don't have much time. I wanted to go on to the related issue of the gold bugs. My, my point is, just as the crypto people want to want to focus on this anthropological myth about about credit and gifting and and gold never mattered and all that, uh, and that they get from people like Graeber and this woman who wrote for uh, wrote for the Atlantic, uh, the gold bugs certainly. Uh, provoked by the discussion you and I had uh, about three weeks ago, they they really are obsessed with the idea that money it can be that gold can be held in a hand, that you can store it in your basement, that you can hoard it. All of those things really have them hung up, and uh, and they they just cannot. And I had a little problem with this too. They kind of put their mind around the idea that a medium of exchange can be something like Bitcoin. Uh, they 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 can't get past this. And and in a way, I can sort of understand their hang up if they are hung up on the regression theorem. If they say it had to originate in a commodity, and yeah, yeah. People, then there's something difficult oh, for them to recognize I, that, I totally just as you it. were saying, that it could yeah. become that, that Bitcoin. I, I totally get it. Like, well, like you, I think you and I share this, the yeah. same sort of intellectual trajectory when we first heard about this. Yeah. That was the first place we went. You know, we were like, wait, that, you know, there's, there's, there's no pre-existing uh, commodity value for this thing. It violates yeah. the regression theorem, so therefore it can't be money. And, and do you have anything else to tell me? Because it just, it was like it ruled it out. Yeah. You know? yes. And it took, yes. it took years for me to kind of come around. And but part of the problem here, I think, is that in those early days, and I mean 2000. 10, 11, and 12, and even halfway through 2013, uh, it was difficult to find explanations of Bitcoin that, that were designed for the economist. Yeah. You know, most of them were, were computer science related, they're related to the cryptographic industry, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, and there wasn't anything clearly written for that related to uh, an, an economist. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about, um, and I'm embarrassed to say it, but I didn't understand the limits on uh, the protocol limits on, on the rate of money creation until I read an attack on Bitcoin in Wired magazine that came out. Did you, did you see the question that came to, Any opinion on gold backed cryptocurrency? So, gold backed crypto, gold backed cryptocurrency, any opinion on that? My, my opinion on that is that, uh, well, obviously, I, by the way, completely agree with Jeff about the Hayekian view of letting a hundred flowers bloom with respect to any kind of money people want to bring out potentially on a free market, uh, but insist that there will be powerful network effects, there will be a dominant money at any one time. Uh, getting So therefore, you're free to bring out gold-backed cryptocurrency if you want. My, 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 the reason why I don't think there's much hope for it is because I do think that highlights the potential advantage that cryptocurrency has over gold. Uh -huh. uh, the, 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 the central banks of this world are still sitting on a billion ounces of gold. They can most much more easily seize the people's gold. That's what they've done. Uh, and, uh, and it's much easier to catch somebody with gold in his basement. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why I think cryptocurrency has better potential. And I would rather not mate cryptocurrency with gold i don't it's not a concept that has me well, excited but what do you think jeff well so I, I think that there's a way in which you can use blockchain technology to create a good uh, a record of ownership provenance so called yeah. um, and uh, so let's say for example i have a, 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 like a back cryptocurrency that's the question yeah, I, yeah Gene, I know i'm oh, sorry. if you give me a second <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. so, so let's, let's say that I, I have the most beautiful storage facility for, for rare cars ever, okay? And I invite the world uh, to store their cars with me. And I, and I distribute uh, and I prove ownership rights and provenance of these cars with blockchain technology. And then these become tokens that, uh, that people can exchange with each other. So now I've got a rare car-backed uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Okay, that could work.
right? And in that exact same way, I can imagine the same thing for gold. I'm just saying that I don't, I, um, uh, I don't think there's anything special uh, about a gold-backed cryptocurrency as versus an Oriental rug-backed uh, crypto or, or a rare painting-backed crypto or anything else. Blockchain technology is useful for establishing audit trails, uh, proving provenance, and and the token tokenization of those ownership rights can themselves trade as money. So, and to that extent, I think there's something to say for it. But but the people who are recommending a gold back crypto as if crypto is not going to be valuable unless it's backed by gold, I think are sort of fundamentally misunderstanding the the value of crypto in the first place. I see. Okay. The VR, oh, okay. I, I I would I, I think that's a good point. You see, your your analogy was. You talk about things that are also quite scarce. Is that that's why you used it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and okay. things uh, things over which you have to establish uh, some some ownership okay. uh, claim and an immutable ownership claim. So Jean, I know she wants us to go an extra ten minutes. I've got to take a guy over to the airport, and what? I need to leave here. <laughs> and like, yeah, I know it's crazy, but I have to head out. Like, one is that going to be okay with you? Uh, uh, well, the the comment said wrap up. Sometime in the next ten minutes, so we can wrap up now. Oh, yeah, no, okay. wrap up now. No, no, okay. I, 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 I got to get over to the JFK. I, I, I want to go back to my point. Sense. I just emphasize okay, well, again well, that, that in terms yeah. of the in terms of in terms of a money that is independent of government, gold was a sitting duck. That's the problem. That's why cryptocurrency has better potential. My only point. Let's wrap up. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and thank you, Naomi. Great today. I always learn from you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both so Bye. much. Thank you. thank you to everyone who's been uh, participating in the chats. You guys have been awesome. Uh, Jean and Jeffrey, we have a potential topic request for next time if you're uh, if you're willing to explore the area of copyright and IP. Definitely okay. Like the open source movement yeah. is really exciting, um, but you know, is is there an issue with IP? Like, I think there are a lot of people who'd like to hear from that. Are you it's interested? Raging. In that? Raging. I'm I'm, I'm, fa I'm fascinated by that by that topic, and, okay. it, and it may or may not uh, relate to, to blockchain technology. By the way, because of, because of this very issue of provenance. I mean, can you establish uh, provenance of of certain ideas? Right. No, it's, uh, and you see a lot of patents going on in uh, blockchain at the moment. You have to wonder if it started out as an open source uh, project, how are people are putting patents on the tech. So that could be yeah. interesting. So let's, uh, let's discuss that further. Next week, that may be our topic. So at, 11 at 11 o'clock. Um, if you haven't liked or, uh, the video or subscribed, please do. It's really, really helpful, and it means that you don't miss any of the live streams from these wonderful gentlemen. Uh, you can check out more stuff from Jeffrey at his wonderful site, AIER, the American Institute for Economic Research. He's always putting out lots of articles there, so check those out. Gene Epstein runs a monthly debate series called the Soho Forum in Manhattan, so make sure that you go and check that out if you are in the area. Otherwise, they do post their videos online. And thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here. This has been a lot of fun. I've been uh, uh, drinking my my tea. <laughs> oh, we had we had we've had a hundred thousand views of our debate on Bitcoin between Eric Voorhees and Peter Schiff, and we're probably going to have two hundred thousand soon. I think you all want to watch it and discuss. Absolutely, that. but uh, you can also watch that on my channel, uh, and you can see little uh, teasers as well on <laughs> my Twitter. So make sure you check it out. And and that's my intellectual property. Got you. Okay. <laughs> Go away, Gene. I stole it. You didn't mind the idea. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quick, I've got to run. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, so something else. All right, thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.